What was in the goodie bag? There was lube. Lu- this was interesting though. The lube was one for the front and one for the back. Oh, yeah. I didn't know they have different types of lube. <laughs> Obviously, I got condoms too. I don't know what I'm going to do with the condoms. You uh, can put them on your strap. Mm, I think I boiled them for long enough. <laughs> 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 Can you guys let us know if you boil your straps, please? Hi guys and welcome to 159 of the Two Twos podcast. I am Nana and I am Ro, and together we are Two Twos. Welcome everybody. We're in another new location. In another location. <laughs> We're in another loca- new location. Um, I'm I'm liking it. I'm liking this cute grey. You know, grey is my favorite color. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, you should know that. Grey. Yep, <laughs> grey and black. But grey is my favorite color. I'm really enjoying this couch. It's very comfortable. Yeah, yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool, man. But shout out, shout out to you. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to ID Studios. To How's your week been? Um, it's been cute. As I said, like I'm really enjoying my freedom of like free like okay. I'm enjoying the freedom of freelancing. I'm not enjoying the delayed payments Listen, of freelancing. I'm What's not gonna t- lie. Okay, we need to get into this. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of people talking about doing freelancing and invoicing and having to chase up invoices. Right. Yeah. I've been seeing it too much yeah <laughs> lately and i'm tired i'm tired we, we need to chase one up ourselves oh, actually yes, i still haven't emailed them do you know what they emailed us and said look us in our business way they emailed <laughs> us yet and said oh, they processed the payment yeah now. but it's not it hasn't dropped yet they, said they will let us know when it's dropping <sighs> you know we got bills as i said this before you know like this freelancing life is not easy because mm-hmm. these people will take i don't know 60 days from 60 up to a year to pay people. But my yeah. bills don't, my bills don't stop. I can't pause my bills. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I can't, I've worked, I've I've worked. I've given a service. I expect to be paid in a timely manner so I can pay my bills because life is not, <sighs> life is not cheap. I don't know why. Life is not free. And the things as well, if you put them on blast. Yeah. Like other brands are gonna see you do that and yeah. not wanna work with you because you put yeah. them, and it, I don't know, it's just, a, it just puts you in a weird predicament. Mm-hmm. Like, do I pay these bills? And become homeless or become homeless. Right. Like, which one is it? You know right. What I mean? so, yeah. I know. I've been seeing lots of people. I, we sympathize with you. Mm-hmm. And, um, but you know, BBC are great. They pay. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's good to know. <laughs> BBC, they're going to pay that invoice, boy. We're going to pay that invoice. That's Cookie. good to know. That's yeah. good to know. Speaking of, what have you been paid for um, recently? So, so, swipe your sign. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a brand new podcast, guys, called Swipe Your Sign with BBC, BBC One Extra. And I'm. I have. It's really weird having a new co-host. Mm. You guys, Nana is my co-host. All yeah. Time. How is that? Do you know? Everyone keeps asking how you feel about me doing another podcast. Oh, why? Everyone keeps asking. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Everyone keeps asking, and I get it though, because obviously we've been doing this for like next month is going to be four years mm-hmm. since we started two twos. Yeah. And we've been on a journey together, and I just feel like people think if someone when you do different things. Mm-hmm that it, it means that there's some sort of trouble in paradise no, or they just feel like you're leaving your one behind mm. and stuff like that but it's okay to do different things like, yeah it's it's okay to have like other opportunities do you know mm-hmm. what i mean like i'm very much into like my film stuff do you know what i mean yeah. i enjoy doing that and that was like that's like my first love and this is like another love that i you know i had when i met you i guess like we had this 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 love together and this baby together mm-hmm. but you absolutely can do other things yeah. like that's and this is more like this is more your lane than anything do you know what yeah, i mean like this, you, what I do, this is what you want to do as a I'm career saying, all right <laughs> she want to be in front of the camera she, she's the star of the show yeah, yeah. okay so, so. I, I mean i hear it i hear it but that doesn't mean that there's trouble in paradise no, guys bare, bare people have asked me you know it's bad. I don't think anyone's asked you. Have they? No, 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 no one's asked yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People asked me. They were like, "Oh, like, so how does Nana really feel about you like doing another podcast about your sign?" Yeah, I feel like, okay. Are you sure? Is she sure? Yeah. I'm like, but do you know what? As well, I think. Do you remember? Yeah, there was a tweet that went round, mm. and they not the wedding one, not the marriage the, one. Yeah, when, oh, the, when she Lord. said she was jealous. Yeah, but and the, but it's the way she said it though. That was weird. Yeah, and I just but I do want, but at the same time, a lot of people agreed with her, and mm-hmm. it was like it's, it's healthy to be jealous of your friends. And then it's not a jealous person. Do you know you're not a jealous person? No, I'm not a <laughs> jealous person. Like I understand to a certain degree of and and it can be just people that you might even see on the ground, people that you don't even know. Mm, no, you might see yourself. them, yeah, yeah, you might see them doing something and you'll be like, oh, I wish I was doing, you know, something in my field on this scale. Mm, Do you know mm, what I mean? Yeah. But like in terms of like even even that situation, her, her, her friend being um, proposed to, I get it. Maybe she wanted to be proposed to, and I feel like jealousy is a normal sort of like mm. feeling yeah but it's the way 
you deal with it. Yeah. Like that was yeah. her whole thing was really, really weird. I'm so sorry. Comment on Twitter to tweet that room. Like, I just saw my friend get engaged. That was up to me. That was it, it was the it was the choice of words to me. I thought yeah. that was just not nice. Yeah. And obviously, like I think she deleted it as well. But yeah. Oh no, she deleted it. Yeah, I think oh. she deleted it, but she was very defensive. Yeah. She was just like, I this is how I felt. I came on tweet. But no, I understand that. But like, yeah, I'm not also, I'm also not a very much a jealous person either. So. Yeah, like yeah. I just feel like this. This is the why it works for us because mm. we encourage each other. Do you to know do, what I'm saying? To we do the things other. that we want to do. But the things we're doing se- together, we encourage mm-hmm. to do, and the things separately as well. Mm-hmm. And like, why do you want to do one thing for the rest of your life? It's like, true. don't you want to do lots of different, different things different and try things. different things? Do you know yeah. what I mean? And just expose yourself to different audiences mm-hmm. and things like that. But just to answer everybody's question, like, there's no prep trouble. Yeah, I think I have new podcasts. I think it's a <laughs> great, great opportunity. Like something like BB from BBC as well is huge. You know what I mean, like, I think it's an amazing amazing opportunity um the ad the ad is out now and it looks amazing do you know what i mean well, by the time this episode drops the there's one episode out, out. oh that yeah. yeah there would have so been one episode out. out it came out on monday right right now it's not past so you guys should have watched it you guys should have watched it so it's going to be only available on audio for a month Oh. And then after a month, then they're gonna release it on that yeah. like you get to actually see the um the dates on YouTube. Yeah, because they want to drive listeners. Of course, yeah, yeah. Because it's a podcast. Yeah. yeah, and you know, what? it's called Swipe Your Sign, guys. Mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know, it's called Swipe Your Sign. My co-host is Nathan Henry from Geordie Shaw, and also Celestial Tree, who is an astrology expert. Mm-hmm. So what it's about is um we go on blind dates with different star signs. Mm. You know the gays love a star sign? Love a star sign. Do you know what I'm saying? Horoscope love a star, star thing. sign. Yep. That's our thing. And before that, we have a reading from Celestial and she basically gives us advice and she lets us know if we're going to be compatible with our dates or not. Mm. And she just kind of guides us through that process. Like, she, a lot of times she has to tell me to s- just not to sell anyone dreams. That was, <laughs> that was my like, number was one Was that the advice. main thing? Is that, is yeah. that what Libras do? A little bit. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm, I'm a Scorpio rising. Absolutely not. You will not. You will not do that today. You will absolutely not do that today. Maybe it's because no. it's just, I'm it's a Sagittarius moon as well. It's, so no, it's definitely the Libra. <laughs> it's definitely the whole Libra sun that is the charming part. It was definitely Libra. And sells people dreams. It was definitely Libra part. Mm-hmm. So there was that. And I, do you know what? In the process, I learned a lot about myself. And I've been able to apply that in a real life. Not that I've been dating anyone since the podcast. Uh, but maybe I'm talking you never know maybe something happened with somebody from the podcast question maybe someone do you think um, that you you know don't tell people dreams anymore do you think that you've stopped I had a conversation with somebody about this yesterday <laughs> okay. about the road bug yeah <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. If you don't know what the road bag is, if you don't know what the road bag is, you don't know what to know what it is, to be honest. And she was just like, I've kind of noticed there's a pattern. The person I'm speaking to said there was a pattern with me and the women and how things end and like the process to get there. And That's the, not the first time you've heard this because I've told you this. <laughs> and she was just like, Why do you think that is? And I was like, Do you know what? I just think it's because I'm nice. And I was like, Do you know, I have a lack of, <laughs> I just have a lack of boundaries <laughs> with my niceness. People just when you, they, I, I don't think I saw people dreams. Okay. I'm just nice. Okay, so so I so I'm not nice. Not really. <laughs> okay. Like I don't think you're as nice as me. Okay, <laughs> okay. I don't think the the the, the niceness is the thing. I think okay okay i do think the niceness is thing but to your detriment because because mm. you're nice you don't want to hurt their feelings and then you also don't want to be b- the bad guy so yeah. that's that's i mean if we're gonna let you did say this yeah if, yeah she was like a, but at the same time she said that i but on the flip side mm-hmm. i will give somebody advice mm-hmm. for example if they need to get their nails done mm-hmm. i'm gonna point out like maybe you should get your nails done you yeah because I mean? it's looking a bit <laughs> cong cong. and she was just like i need to hone like really relax when i do that because she said it's coming from a good place I'm I'm looking out for somebody however my delivery is not always right doesn't always it sounds translate shady. that it way it sounds a bit shady <laughs> well I've been saying this my mum is a shady person no, so no, Ghanaian no, mums are mad <laughs> shady fam like even my mum is shady like and when we get together we're shady together do you know what I mean mm. so yeah I under- I completely understand that but going through I mean you don't want to give too much away because guys you have to watch this so you have to listen to every episode um, but what what horoscope what star sign do you think you're the most compatible with so we're actually compatible with everyone apart from Leo's <laughs> you see what I'm saying guys <laughs> you see what I'm saying and, and, <laughs> and in in the defence of like all the horoscopes Leo's are bad vibes so I yeah, understand I'm not com- that yeah I'm not compatible do you know what it is Libras have got main character, mm. at, but but Leo's, Leo's have got ooh. main character. Leo's one is on another level of main yeah. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just can't have another main character in my. And then Pisces as well has a bit of main character, but they said 
I am compatible with them if I'm open to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was, I think Taurus, I wasn't too compatible with Taurus. Oh, I can't take, I'm not going to go too No, much. we can't, yeah, we can't, but we can't do too much. I'm not that compat- compatible with Taurus, but again, they will, they will put me on a straight and narrow mm. if I'm in a relationship with a Taurus mm. and a Capricorn as well. I hear it. Do you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm a bit, a bit stubborn and I like things my way, but yeah. they are very much, they're very like rigid. But my Sagittarius is not really agreeing with rigid because I like to be like airy fairy. Yeah, that's a sag- <laughs> that's a sad sign because someone was like my big three because I'm a, a Scorpio Sun, Sagittarius rising, and a Gemini Moon, and they was like that's so chaotic, and I said why? Be- and they were like because Sagittarius just like to like just free yeah. and just you know, and Gemini's are just mad. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you know, so it's, <laughs> look at her agreeing. She loves it. Bro. <laughs> She loved it. Yeah, so I'm just like chaotic. And Celestial actually did look at my chart. Oh, the other day. She? Yeah, she did. We was waiting in the lobby. And she was like, um, what did she say? She said like, it makes a lot of sense when she was looking at my chart. And then she said I was horny. She huh? said my chart says I'm horny. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, actually, in my head, I was like, you right. <laughs> in my head, I was like, you right. <laughs> what about Celestial? She's going to tell she you. Know, yeah, she, know, she probably knows. Oh. No, so I'm not going to lie. Celestial's readings were on a point. Mm. Every single time she said the date was gonna end up like this, mm-hmm. it ended up that this exactly the same way. How do you even study this thing? How do you even I, study? I have no idea. Like she had one card like this, like I said, they look like the person's wearing a wedding dress. I'm <laughs> we're not trying to get married to nobody. No, but you said you're dating to marry. I feel like I've changed my mind, guys. <laughs> I've changed my mind about oh dating to marry. Lord. I am just Are you on the streets? Enjoy. Are you on the pavement? Um, I feel like I'm definitely in the streets. Ready for the road? I'm ready t- I'm ready to get an Uber to drop me off a few times. Okay. But I'm ready to, I'm okay being in the streets. Even, even <laughs> bougie in the streets. <laughs> it's because bougie in the streets. I'm crying. Always, always. That is hilarious. But yeah, because somebody else was, was dating to marry as well that was interested in me. Right. And they just expected me to like, do the most within a week. Yeah. Like, relax, hun. We Yeah, I think we touched on that last week about how, um, I think in the be- you kind of have to study someone. I, I really do feel like you have to study someone. And sometimes in the beginning, I don't like you that much yet. But I don't know there's you. Re- yes. Yeah. And I don't think that's a bad thing to say. I don't anyway, know. This person you. said that I need to ask my age. So because I didn't, it took long to text her back. She said she, she said she had expectations of me, and like I need to ask my age because I took long to text her back. I'm sorry. It was a busy week. I was out with my friends. I was soaking in life. But you know, we've and been having the discussion, especially with Jean. Um, oh, in the group chat. Shout out Jean, my babes, yeah. And she did say that if you're busy, you, you have five seconds to say, I'm busy, I'll, I'll chat to you I later. didn't say that. I, 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 I said, I will text you. Mm-hmm. I will call you when I'm free. Yeah. And they... That's fine then. You didn't do... One thing about me, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to text yeah, you later. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what you, I'm saying? You didn't, you didn't I do, do And the thing is like, I, I, I'm going to stand by this here and defend you in this because you always have time for people. Do you know I what I mean? So if you're actually busy, you're busy. I'm actually busy. And this person jumps the gun. You missed out, hon. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you missed out, babes. Anyway. Um, I think my most compatible star sign is Libra. I would agree, yeah. I always meet Libras yeah. for some reason. All the she time. just gravitates towards us. I don't I, blame you. Yeah. I, okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, yeah, I gravitate towards Libras. And the next is Pisces. I love a Pisces. Well, I only, I only know one Pisces, but that's my babes. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to about this like show and what like, people seeing? I'm looking forward to... There was an actual unusual date on there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, because, well, I was going to just say one of the dates is with a masked person. Mm-hmm. Well... Yeah, yeah, say yeah. Mass person. Mass person. yeah. In, you know, I, it's a spectrum. Yes, yeah, spectrum. I would mm-hmm. say that with a mass person, and yeah, I wouldn't have usually wanted to date them. It mm. was a really good date. Um, yeah. Maybe I'm going to go too much. I'm going to stop now. Yeah. And but outside of that, I'm looking forward to. There's a lot. Of, there's obviously going to be opportunities for me, and already like some of them have been like rolling in, mm-hmm. and the episode hasn't even dropped yet. So yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing where my career can go from here. Mm. Really. And Hear also, Celestia, I'm grateful because Celestial, me and Celestial have debriefs every single episode. Every single day, we've we filmed every day for two weeks. And we that film, when we did that, it was filming two episodes a day. There was a whole crew there. It was really exhausting. And so every day, me and Celestial used to debrief. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate her for that. Mm-hmm. And um, also, I learned so much from Nathan because obviously Nathan has been doing reality TV for time. He's been on like Geordie Shaw. He's been on, um, on I think, Beach. X on the Beach. Yeah. He's been on... Um, I'm a celebrity in Australia, all this stuff. And he was such a pro. Mm -hmm. Like, when it came to, like, having to announce things on a camera on the mic, he just did it in one take. Yeah. Me, I was like... (laughs) 
because I'm quite laid back and the way I talk he, is quite soft and whatever. Yeah. And he's like, like he's he's a Geordie. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? He's loud and like he's very he's really um animated. colorful and mm. animated and things like that. And I just learned so much from him. And yeah, I just I love them both. I'm happy. I'm happy that it was with them. Yeah. No. Yeah. Definitely. Obviously, I came down one of the shoots and just like the energy. I mean, by the time I came down, it was like the last episode. But like, I feel like you finally like not finally, but you a lot by that time were in your element of even yeah, like yeah. meshing together so well. Um, and it was really, really nice to see the way that you lot bounced off each other, like all three of you. And everyone has different personalities, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like Celestial was more like chill, like the chillest, the most chill out yeah. of everybody then you then you know um nathan and so but it was nice to see like each person's personality shine mm-hmm. you know even though you have different personalities so yeah it was yeah. really nice i shout out to ella and leanne like they're the producers yeah but i feel like i found out the other day there were other producers but those aren't the two producers that i knew right some <laughs> of them don't come down innit? yeah they don't really come down but, yeah. but, but shout out to all of the whole team mm. but uh, but ella and leanne they like really believed in me like mm-hmm. Them two, and obviously Ella also edits this podcast. Yeah. So like, yeah, I just, I'm really grateful to them to for bringing me in mm. and just giving me this opportunity and believing in me because they were encouraging me every day. Even mm. when I was thinking, like, am I not? I was thinking to myself sometimes, am I doing the job right? Well? Yeah, like, am yeah. I just giving it justice? Yeah. Whatever. And they were just like, no, you're doing great. So I appreciate them for that. They picked you for a reason, do you know what I mean? And they yeah. obviously knew what you could do and that's why they picked you. Yeah. Do you know and what I'm I mean? Grateful. Yeah. And process syndrome needs to go in right in the in bin. In the bin, in the bin. But when you're doing something for the first time, it's obviously going to be a bit like, oh, like you're going to mm. be nervous and all of that stuff. And then you get in gradually, like after some time, you get into it. Like, yeah. I think that's just natural for all the things. But like, I think you can just tell by like your personality that this is something that you're like meant to do and something that you're really good at. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it's just doing more of it. Yeah. Yeah. Tangled. Yes. Um, you gave me like pride. We're celebrating black. We're celebrating pride. We've been celebrating pride since June. Yeah, well, if this comes out, Black like, Pride would have happened already. Yeah, 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 it would have happened already. <laughs> but um, <laughs> let us know if you enjoyed our set. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's know if you enjoyed our set. It hasn't even happened yet, but let's know if you enjoyed our set. And also, like, Black Pride, like, I feel like this year, I've got to be honest, you know, I love everybody. I love Black Pride, I love everybody. Yeah. But I just feel like this year, it feels a little bit flat. Yeah, like, I mean, like, in terms of a rollout, I feel like last year there was more of a rollout. And this year, we knew who the main, the main, like, acts were. Yeah. I don't think we know this year. No, we don't. They haven't been like confirmed, but also, yeah, I just feel like in terms of like social media, there isn't like much. Go- like I haven't. I maybe I'm not going out to look for it. I don't know. I, if I've, I really looked, I've it. already seen it when I've gone to look for it. Right. Like, I haven't okay. just seen it on my algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and I think yeah, that's the way. It's, I don't I know. If why people are not talking about it enough, but also I just know that people are going to be there. Do you know what I mean? That's the thing. Like with Black Pride, you can always count on people actually being there. Yeah. I believe people are going to be there. I think that this is going to be the most. Mm, well, it's going to be happening now, isn't it? So I'm not too sure. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll give you another... Re- well, after we go to Black Pride, yeah. next episode, we'll talk about what, what we actually, how we experience it. Yeah, but it. it will be good to see, like, what we think it's going to be like compared to what it really is like yeah. when we actually go. I just know. I think that as it stands, I feel like this year is going to be very... Um, it's going to be varied. I think it's going to be very black and ethnic minority based. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're going to see a lot more, like, acts from Asians, probably um, people from the Asian um, demographic. Mm-hmm. And I... I feel like because Black Pride started as just a very blatty Black Pride and now it's like more politically black, um, I'm just interested to see how the audience are going to take to that. Do you know what it is? Yeah, I think I'm not so sure that like Black Pride started as a blackity black. I, I think at the time. I lady feels black, so if her friends were black. Yeah, probably because yeah. it was smaller. <laughs> but in terms of like it being, you know, like more of a Bane Pride, I think it's sort of always been like that because. We have we have to think about our age. Our age is completely different to Lady Phil's like time. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. her time, I feel like there was more. Not sus- saying that you guys are old, by the way. No, we're not saying that. <laughs> but I'm think I think that there's more. There was more of a solidarity between like the Asian community and yeah. you know and black i do you know what? i really hate saying asian and then black it just it freaks me out because it, does, it doesn't make sense for asian and black yeah i really don't black believe asian. yeah I, I mean i don't believe i want i want to say african and caribbeans but it's just a mouthful but yeah i don't know what is black i yeah. don't believe in, i don't believe in black white and brown i absolutely do not believe in it yeah. i don't believe it's a thing i don't believe it's a role but anyway 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I think there was more solidarity between like black people and Asian people at that time mm-hmm. um, because they were f- all fighting together. And c- of course, race was obviously a big issue back then. Not that it's not an issue now, it is, but back mm. then. So like they all like proper yeah, stuck together. together yeah. And now there's more, there's a bit more of a divide. I think that's what it is. Mm. So our generation is just like, oh, but this is called Black Pride and it's not blackity black. Um, but I, you know, black was used as an umbrella term for everyone, um, yeah. for everyone, for black and Asian people back then. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Especially like in the nineties, um, late eighties and stuff. So yeah. Um, so I understand where people are coming from, but I just think it's because they're younger and they probably don't understand sort yeah. of like the history and yeah. And I just feel like some people like to have out- outrage for no reason. <laughs> to be honest. But do you know what? Having said that, I'm going off on a totally different subject right now. But this, what you're saying, just reminded me of something. Mm. I went to a panel last week. Oh yeah. And it was the worst panel I've been to in my whole entire existence, yeah. And this, basically, I've, I've walked in and I had my, like, gold caps in my mouth, whatever. <laughs> and the woman's asking me, I'm on the guest list. And I said, yeah, I'm on the guest list. And she was like, what's your name? I said, Ro. And she was like, and she said, oh, you're right. By the way, they've been DMing us to come to this event, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even know who I was on the watching at all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like, we can make it. Mm. And they were like, is this Nana? I was with Talia. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, this is my friend Talia. Um, but, you know, she's going to sit down the spot. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Blah, blah, blah. There's drinks, there's snacks, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Anyway, I walked in. The demographic was very white, yeah. Mm. And I thought, okay. Now I understand why they're messaging us there because they need a bit of diversity. Can, I just, can I just interject? Um, they should have known what we looked like. If you're DMing us to come to your event, you're DMing us, oh, you come to my event, I'm sending you just invite, can you please come to my event? Shouldn't you have gone on our profile to see um, what we looked like? I'm also, they should have known the black girls coming to them because obviously they didn't invite enough black people. They should have, the black people they did invite, they should have at least remember our names. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like this Roman Anna is not difficult to remember. Mm. And anyway, so we've gone to the, we've gone to get out the wine. We've gone to get the little um, hummus and jalapenos and whatever <laughs> they had. And yeah, like the mingling was wasn't yeah so we went and sat down in the the room where the panel was taking place and it was in a church by the way and it was about sex and sex positivity it was about sex positivity and i will i thought you know what i'm looking forward to the panel Mm. let's sit down like i'm pretty sure the subjects are going to be amazing and then the panel sat down and it was also very white Mm. and i thought okay it's giving white and cis Mm. to be honest and then everyone introduced himself. The moderator, however, who owns the business, was a gay black man. So I just sat there and I looked at him and I looked at the panel and I looked around to me and I thought, hmm. okay. And then I, so they, they all introduced themselves. I thought, okay, maybe somebody could be trans, whatever, mm. you never know, innit? And then they all introduced themselves. It was very cis and it was two gay men, a lesbian and a cis woman, cis straight woman there. Mm. And they were talking about their experiences. And for, for a panel that has so many queer people in it, they didn't even, inc- the discussion about sex was so binary, mm. yeah. I couldn't believe it. And my, my friend Talia, she kept on texting me and we're sitting next to each other. She was like, this conversation is not, the panel is not diverse enough for this conversation yeah. because you, everyone has different sexual experiences. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't matter what, con- whatever, whatever your background is, whatever your, um, however you present that like your gender, all this stuff, yeah. yeah there's just lots of different ways and obviously you're never going to get every single representation on a panel like it's just impossible to do however you can try to include others in the conversation Mm -hmm. and like one of them made um skin colored condoms yeah Mm -hmm. and the way the room was clapping you know that the the (laughs) condom is skin tone color is that gonna what is that gonna oh, sorry is that gonna end racism no is it's that no, it's it's racism? Very, no, and it's and thing is yeah it's been a long time since i've seen a condom I'll yeah be however condom is not like white see through babes yeah, and like, it's gonna you're gonna look black anyway do you know what i mean like a condom is it's transparent right we can get you can get colored one babes i mean what's get the, red. but what's the point either way yeah is that sex room, positivity w- the room the room when you thought this was like groundbreaking okay maybe i'm missing something you know when the plasters mm. the plasters came out and they mm. were like skin tone yeah. i thought okay maybe i'm missing something whatever cool and um we had goodie bags though no, that was i love that well, one thing about me i love a freebie what was in the goodie bag there was lube, lube this was interesting though the lube was one for the front and one for the back oh yeah i didn't know they have different types of lube, lube. <laughs> okay. obviously i got condoms too i don't know what i'm gonna do with the condoms you uh, can put them on your strap mm, i think i bought them for long enough <laughs> 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 can you guys let us know if you boil your straps please <laughs> and then there was like some cbd sweets and chocolates uh, vitamin c something and 
think that was it. Mm. That's and quite one good. thing about me, I took some wine because after they let me sit through this nonsense, right. I took a bare wine in the bag. I had a Tesco bag, I took all the wine. I hear it. And um, yeah, so anyway, they finished with the, with the panel. The, one of the ladies, ah, she was, she owned a sex party, a play party, mm-hmm. yeah. And she was talking about that. And I was thinking, yeah, cause obviously we've got play parties as well. So I'm thinking, oh, this is I'm, I'm interesting to hear. I'm sure hers is not diverse. <sighs> <laughs> it just sounded dead. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I was like, what is this? Anyway, the conversation finished and then, um, I guess there was a trans man in the audience. Okay, yeah. And he was fuming, yeah. He put his hand up. They asked for questions and he put his hand up and he was just like, this conversation was extremely binary and extremely disappointing mm. because there's people who are gender non-conforming, there's trans people, there's digital, all these people and nothing of that was part of the discussion. Right. And he was fuming. And then there was another, another Asian girl was there and she was like, you know, as there's very limited black and brown people in this audience today, there was one, two, three, four, five, six of us. Yeah, out the whole audience, six of us were um, non-white. Mm-hmm. And they were just like, our experiences were not here. Like mm-hmm. our experiences on dating apps is different to mm-hmm. what your experiences on dating apps are. Right. And just different things, even our party, our experiences in like play parties are different. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, so they were like, none of our experiences were displayed here today and also, even if you couldn't speak on it because you're not that kind of person, you didn't mm. even talk about how your spaces are mm. inclusive for these people. Right, yeah. And she, she started crying. She, she was like, this is, she was like, I'm PMSing, but, <laughs> but I'm Bless. crying because, you know, this is, it just shows that B, all that BLM, BLM is expired it's, now, it's, expired. It? it's expired. It's, there's no thought, uh, t- there's no thought about us. Yeah. And whatsoever. Th- and then I remember, and then this white lady took the mic and was like, I just want to let you guys know from a different perspective, that was epic. But the thing and is it was like, like clapping. It would, be, it would be epic for you, babe, because it caters to you. Do yeah. you know what I mean? These are conversations about your experiences. Yeah. And they're not about, you know, black and brown people, which is... Listen, it was mad. So uh, anyway, I was gonna put my hand up to complain too, but them two got there first because mm. I was getting a bit waved on the wine, so I was a bit slower than them. <laughs> and by the time they did their thing, I said we were. I just looked at my friend and said, "Should we go now?" Yeah. And then we went. We went to Lush and Barbie had a party. Went to that instead, and yeah. we ended our night better than we started it. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's such a shame, though. Was it like it was? It was a was it a quick like supposed to be a queer panel? Like was it? I don't. Do you know? Um, I think it was meant to be everyone. Right. I don't, okay. Yeah. I just it's think just it was meant to be everyone. But and it I, wasn't inclusive. But it wasn't. And the thing is that, like, the lesbian lady, she's got some, one panel, whatever, uh, one business, or whatever it is, and she was just like, how th- uh, their focus is cis, mm-hmm. st- is cis men, cis straight men. Mm-hmm. And she just kept talking about, oh, yeah, you would be fascinated to find out that cis men do this. Like, who cares? Like, no one's fascinated. You know, no one's fascinated about anything. And the yeah. thing, it was just, they were kept talking about data and things like, it was just, it was boring. Yeah. I'm not here to talk about, I don't want to listen to about data. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not a meeting, it's not a HR meeting. That's how you know, like, everything in this world really just more so caters to, you know, white men. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was, def- it was definitely that. It was <laughs> definitely <laughs> given that. Yeah. Well, I could see that one of them, he's a TikToker guy, he tried to be like, you know, because you know my platform is anti-racism and you know anti-transphobic and did it. but you can tell he just said it it was like a little his little punchline like he right. in his little yeah. speeches yeah. but after that there was nothing <laughs> it's just like we can really see through these things guys um, <laughs> like we can really really see through these things it's not cute just to say something we need some action yeah. and it just shows like it all of this shows you went to a panel did an indicator for you and it just like yeah you actually don't care and the fact that the organizer or the person who owns the business is a black man mm-hmm. i mean he, he, when everybody was, he, I could always be embarrassed. I think, you know, when you do a panel and mm-hmm. normally it's like, oh my God, that was so good. Da, 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 da. There just wasn't really much of that. And I could, right. just, I could just tell they were disappointed and they were just like, they give the usual, we missed the mark on this occasion, but we're going to go back and think <laughs> about it and do better next time. And the so. audience clapped. Oh, there was something about disability as well. So one of them said that their lubes, mm-hmm. they, all of them have like a triangle on it. So that if it, if a blind person is using it and mm-hmm. they drop it on the floor, it don't roll nowhere because it's got the triangle that okay. stops it. And everyone was clapping. I'm not gonna lie, I clapped too, boy. I was clapping too. Yeah. And then the um, there was a black lady in the audience, and she said that I need to call out the audience because my daughter is partially blind, mm-hmm. and she's like, for me, that should be a standard. The, this is the thing. Yeah. But I think we're clapping because we never even expected it. You yeah. know, I mean? you won't think about you won't think about yeah. that because you're not blind. Yeah. It? Yeah. But it, I mean, like, it is a good thing, but it should be the standards. Yeah, she was like, it should be the standard. And then somebody else was like, as a partially blind, the, a white lady, as a partially blind person, I think that was really good of you. Just from a different perspective. So every single time somebody said something that was like, yo, like, mm, so somebody, is, a white person in the audience will put their hand up and like, kind of like cuddle them and be like, mm. that was okay. Damn. <laughs> 
<laughs> we had to leave, boy. We had to leave, child. It was just, it was just the most least progressive thing I've been to in a very long time. And the thing is, I feel like a lot of people are more progressive. That mm. doesn't happen. This doesn't happen all the time. Like a lot of time, white people are open to listening these days. And yeah, like that. no, it's true. So, but that on this occasion, it yeah, just wasn't. I find that sometimes, like some white people are just like just defensive real quick. Do you yeah, know what I mean, you know, and just like yeah, okay. They just have an answer for everything, basically. Do you know what I mean? But sometimes it's just about listening and be like, okay, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take that into consideration mm. and really think about this for next time. Yeah. And that's all we need to hear. I would have loved if they said, do you know what? In all the hundreds of meetings before we had this panel, could you know they love a meeting before? They love panel. a meeting, bruv. One thing about uh, people that have panels, they're gonna have a meeting. One thing about me and Anna, do you have to spare five minutes? Um, just a few days before the. Panels. Do you know what I'm gonna start saying before we do jobs now? I'm gonna be but like, how many? Me. Yeah, how yeah. many meetings do we have to have before this yeah. this one panel? Sometimes. Some people. I'd better put that money on top of it. And then when you go, when you shop in the day, you didn't need to have that many meetings, but whatever, anyway. <laughs> um, for their KPIs, in it, And, like, I just feel like in every single Zoom, you didn't notice that there was not a black person there. Of course. Come <laughs> or, on, or, or an Asian person. <laughs> and that's why, that's why I always say, you just don't care enough. Yeah. Because if you did, you would make those changes. Yeah, 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 yeah for real. Anyway, Sean, talking of changes, mm-hmm. and the world not being that progressive, yeah. two gay men were stabbed outside a gay bar in Clapham. Mm. And you know, it was really sad because our our podcast, The New One Swipe Sign, was oh, recorded yeah. across the road for right. where the stabbing took place. And we kept on talking about that gay bar, like, we should go, we should go, we should go. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we didn't. And um, I was just like, raw, like, in this day and age, 2023, it was unprovoked. Some guy just went up to them and stabbed them. Just, just because they were standing there and they're gay. I just, and yeah, it's it's really horrific. Like, I do, I'm surprised that this is still happening in 2023. Like, and Clapham, I don't know. There's like, bad gay Clapham, Yeah, like, like, like one side of Clapham is bad gay, 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 gay things, yeah. Literally, like, it's, there's so many gay bars in Clapham. And yeah. I just thought, like, and there's somewhere like Clapham as well. Like, I'm surprised that people are, you know, if this is happening, like, these hate crimes are happening to people. Yeah, you know, it's I think sad. it is really, really sad. I'm just glad that they were both, you know, it wasn't like it wasn't fatal. It wasn't fatal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And um, they're gonna recover from this, but obviously, like, it's a lot of trauma as well. Like, think mm. as a queer person, like, you don't feel safe outside. You're just going to enjoy yourself at yeah. a bar, and you know, the night ends with you being stabbed. And I yeah. think like that is gonna put a lot of trauma on these two these two survivors. 100%. Um, and I just think that it's just so fucked up. Like, yeah. you know. Do you know what though? I have. I will say is one thing about gay people. I'm gonna say is they always try to like make light of things or they try to find a positive, positive like light in whatever it is. And this person, he's recovered. He's been discharged from hospital, and like he put a statement up and was just like, it's just made me more proud to be who I am. This this experience. Yeah, I hear that. And I mean, personally, I would have been like seeking revenge, but <laughs> he is. I commend him for that for just being a bigger person and just. And being positive. I, I guess when that happens to you, you just have to you just have to appreciate the fact that you're still alive. Yeah, of and course. And yeah, so he, the, you have to take something positive from it, mm. I guess. Um, but that sh- it just doesn't mean that should have happened. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that person needs to be in jail. Yeah, they look from the CCTV. They look very young. They as look well. so young. Like yeah. I just don't. I, I don't. I really just don't understand what was going through their minds when they decided to do that. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Like you're, you could potentially end somebody's life and yours as well if you go to prison. Like do you know what I mean? Mm. Like I just think it's just so stupid over someone being outside a gay bar or somebody you know loving the same gender or what have you. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, really. and this is the thing that. Like, we still have to sort of like watch out for as queer people. Like it's not safe everywhere. That's why Black Pride got that got moved. Do you know what I'm saying? Because mm. it was meant to be on the Sunday, but they announced there's a football match on the Sunday. Obviously mm. it's next to West Ham right, football yeah, ground. Yeah. And it just felt like it's not safe. it would be irresponsible to to mix a queer crowd mm-hmm. with a football crowd. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, you know, trans people and people who just look queer are going to be a target yeah, that day. Yeah, absolutely. Football hooligans. Yeah. That are, like, football football fans are, can be quite racist and homophobic. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I, I mean? They said that part as well. Yeah. Racist part too, yeah. So. And it's West Ham. Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> so I hear it and I, and I shout out to them for even, like, you know, making that decision because obviously, like, this is something that's been planned for a while. Yeah, yeah, You've yeah, got yeah. all your vendors and all your, you know, your stalls and just things that have been, like, um, even artists have been booked. Yeah, and been booked yeah. and sorted out, and then you have to move it the next day. But like, it was just so necessary because absolutely not f- football hooligans. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. they're I'm the like, worst crowd. I yeah. really, really hate football fans. I'm really, yeah. Do you as know a what, group I, of people, I went to watch. A, I've watched a football match once. I went to see Arsenal, and I had such a good time. Like mm-hmm. it was 
it was just one of the best experiences I've had. I, I'm not, I used to be into football a lot, but I'm not anymore. Mm. And yeah, I just had a good time. But the crowd though, afterwards. Coming like, home. Go, coming home on they, the tube. They drink tube. there, do they, don't they? Yeah, they drink. Yeah, you can buy beers and stuff. <sighs> on the tube, yeah, they act mad. If it was a, a bunch of black men yeah. like, ch- ch- doing football chants, do you know how much trouble that there would get? Bear police. <laughs> there will be bear police. There'll be so much police. <laughs> but these football <laughs> niggas could get away with it. Like, they'd be shouting on the on the train. Yeah, mad rowdy. Like, so rowdy. But if that was a bunch of black men. Yeah, the police, at, would, 100%. The police will stop the tube. A hundred percent. And this is, I don't even think this is anything to do with like the sport and how loved football is. I just think it's white privilege. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely Anyway, not. child. Should we end on a positive? Should we end it on positives? Because we have some dilemmas from you guys. Oh yeah, we have You got dilemmas. You guys are really going through, aren't you? <laughs> like, they're really... <laughs> and it's always, it's always about relationships. It always, always is about relationships. And the thing is, like, I don't know, like, I mean, I hear it because when we're going through stuff in our relationships, we definitely, you know, go to the group chat and we're just like, yeah, oh, true. just going on. Like, this is what's going on. How should I, you know, deal with this, this issue? Here. I love it. I love that. I love this that you asked us about relationships. Yeah, I, is... I, I mean, what else are they going to ask us? <laughs> I just, this is my, this is a subject <laughs> of my interest in. <laughs> um, someone says, how should I tell my friend that I have grown very close with and happens to be queer that I have a crush on her Maybe even falling in love with her. In love. In love with your yeah. bestie. Fall in love with your bestie. It's giving Gina Nana. <laughs> I know you lot saw the Instagram. I know you guys saw them on Instagram whining on each other. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, we are. We are. She's the love of my life. <laughs> Absolute love of my life. It's just, it, sometimes it happens. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, what can you do? Girl sometimes. Yeah, it's like a girl. But yeah, like, what, would, what would you advise them to do? Tell the friend. But it's scary. They're in love with their best friend. Yeah. Tell the friend. I know, but it's mad scary. So what if the friend doesn't feel the same way and then they can't have the same friendship that they had? What if they do? <laughs> <laughs> but what if they don't? But wouldn't you feel... Uh, okay, right. We This has happened to one of our friends before, though. With my ex-friends. <laughs> um, she liked the friend mm-hmm. and took her a year to tell her that Oh, she yeah, yeah. Oh, her. yeah. Yeah, it might have even been longer than a year. Yeah. But um, I just think that if you're scared... I understand the fear, but also I just feel like if you're with your friend, you should kind of have an inkling that they might like you back. Yeah, because this this friend knew that she liked her. She could tell in it. But Yeah, you should kind I, of do you know what I think if I was in love with one of my friends, mm-hmm. I don't think that they would know. I feel like I'd be good at covering it up. You think so? Yeah, I think I would. <laughs> <laughs> Look, some people could be really be... good at covering it up. Mm, okay, I understand that, not you though, because you'd be flirting like yeah, you you'll be flirting. That's why I did end up in a relationship with the last friend that liked them. I... Yeah, exactly. So sure. actually, do you know what? Forget about that. Mm-hmm. What if they're both scared of telling each other? Yeah, that could be the case, guys. That's what I'm saying. Like, you never know. Like, you should just if if they don't like you, okay, fine. But they could like you, and that's what you need to be on. That's what you need to be thinking about. That they, the 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 possibility of them actually liking you back, because then you know you can just get together. Yeah. So I advise to tell them. Yeah. 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 Tell 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 your tell your friend that you like. Take them, them out to dinner. Say you're just celebrating your friendship. Mm. And then hopefully you believe in celebrating a relationship. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but I wish you the best of luck. But do it nice. Be nice in it. Don't do it by text. Mm. Make sure they can feel your energy, see your tone, and da, 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 all them all them things there and but tell them. Tell them, yeah, let them know. Okay, another one. I'm the mass dom in the relationship. We've been together for four years, but I find it hard to let my femme girlfriend do anything to me sexually. This is a block I'd love to overcome, but it seems embedded deep in my psyche. Have you guys experienced this? Any advice? Love the pod. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Oh, do you know what? I've oh, I've never experienced. <laughs> <laughs> You're so annoying. <laughs> I know she's just waiting for me to finish so she can say some shit. Okay, um, I've never experienced like that before because I've never been a touch me not. Like I've always, yeah. what I want to know with contact is missing. Have you always been like that? Mm. Dry. Have you ever always been like you know af- not afraid but like not feel I'm comfortable. comfortable? Yeah, I feel uncomfortable about a uh, fem. Well, another woman touching you. Um, yeah, I just think that. Oh, is that? I mean, it's a hard one. Like, if you don't feel comfortable, well, there's a reason for you not feeling comfortable. Do you know what? I get it because I think I've I've been this person before. So I get it. That's why I was a lot laughing because I was thinking, less thinking back, and like I was really suffering them times way. And I, 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 the reason why I didn't let people touch me mm-hmm. or the touching was minimal is because I was insecure. It came down to insecurity. Like mm-hmm. you have to just call it for what it is. 
I I was afraid of embracing the feminine parts of me. And I f- thank God that I've grown so much because mm. now I definitely, you guys can see that I embrace it all the time. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm more of a fairy than anything. And like, but back then, I think I was trying, I was like, cos- not cosplaying, but I think I was performing masculinity, masculinity too much. Yeah. And I think that I, in the bedroom and being intimate and being vulnerable with somebody like sexually, I just felt like, they, they would they would like see as me woman. out of that yeah you want to see me seem as a woman i think that i just felt like i just felt too fun it just felt too vulnerable okay and but was it anything to do with you being mask yeah because i didn't want th- i wanted them to keep seeing me as a mask person okay yeah dominant. i didn't want them to see me mm-hmm. as like submissive or anything like that right right and but there's there is beauty in embracing both mm-hmm. do you know what i'm saying and I, it took me a while to like unlearn that and da, 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 da. But now I'm having the great sex. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't have that much sex anymore, but mm-hmm. um, or, I'm lying. I do. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's good to embrace both is what I'm trying to say to you. Yeah. And it's feel, it, for someone who's been in your shoes before, it feels very, uh, very liberating when you do let that guard down eventually. Yeah. And like, you can explore a lot more. Like, sex is just a lot more fun. It's more intimate. Like, mm-hmm. it's just... It's just better overall when yeah. you let your guard down mm-hmm. and where you have to feel safe in order to do so. But I definitely think it was rooted in insecurity. That was the, that is the number one thing I would say was rooted in. But at the same time, having said that, some people are just that person. They just yeah, don't some touched. people are just touch me nots. Yeah. Like they we, you know, we've people have like commented on some of our episodes and just been like, yeah, I just don't like yeah. people touching me. But it seems like this person who's sitting in they the, want the, to. Yeah, yeah, the dilemma, they want to be yeah. touched. And there's obviously something that's blocking them from, from you know, yeah. being open about it. And the thing is like, when you do like, as Rose said, like the sex is just more fun. Like it's just, you're, you're more immersed in it. You're more like, you're just in it with that person. And it's about both of you instead of being about like one mm. person. Um, and it's something that you should enjoy together. So I think I, you, you need to figure out why like there's a block yeah. and work on, on and do you on know that. what? Maybe I will say first, let your guard down. Cause if your guard is up mm-hmm. in that part of the relationship, it probably is up in other in other bits mm. as well. So maybe like when you guys go out, you probably feel like I'm, I'm the best what I have to pay all mm. the time. No, like sometimes just like, Mm-hmm. sometimes receive some princess treatment do you know what yeah. I'm saying like just ease yourself into mm-hmm. it a little bit like if you if you want something out of the relationship from your partner communicate that yeah and like hopefully it's just not all all about them all the time mm-hmm. I think a lot of mask babes yeah they they center their relationships around their feminine girlfriends yeah and they kind of forget themselves a little bit and their needs are not met mm-hmm. and it happens a lot we've it, been saying oh, this yeah, like yeah. it happens a lot like even in he- in the hetero relationships it happens like, and the men's and needs it, are not met a lot of the time it mirrors that yeah <laughs> it's very it's given very much heteronormativity yeah um and i think yeah it's okay to be soft like i feel like a lot of like mass babes because because they're trying to mirror this masculinity that they've seen that they've grown up around mm-hmm. that's what they're trying that's what they're trying to portray mm-hmm. and like that's not that stuff is not real it's all something that's learned and taught and for generations and generations and it's not real and i think when they sometimes when we say oh men are supposed to be one way women are supposed to be one way it's not really true like in the bedroom you can be versed do you know what i mean you can switch it up you can do you know what i mean like you can be fingered (laughs) yeah it's okay yeah okay like you know what i it's also you need to you need to kind of unpack if yeah unpack in a safe environment Mm. to do that if your your relationship is safe enough to do that and if it's not, that's something you also need to that is that is yourself. so important because if mm-hmm. you're if your if your girlfriend doesn't make you feel safe enough to even be vulnerable, then there's a problem. Like mm-hmm. I understand it might it might be coming from you solely, but then like you need to check if it's coming from like your girlfriend as well. If she doesn't, if she expects you to be this to play this gender role of this this masculine person yeah. as a, as the guy in the relationship, you need to, that needs to be checked, and that might not be the right babe for you. Do you know what I mean? You need so a baby. You might need a baby who allows you to be soft. Mm, okay, so we got room for one more oh, dilemma. Think, yeah, we got room for one more. Um, oh, okay, my ex from a year ago reached out trying to rekindle things. It ended pretty badly, and suddenly between us, they hurt me really badly. I'm still really hurt by what they did, but also still in love with them and don't know how to navigate the situation. They said badly. They said hurt it's quite a few times in this. And that's what stands out. See? That's what. That's what. No, I'm not laughing at you, by the way. I'm no, just, no. <laughs> that's what stands out to me about this dilemma. Her my ex from a year ago reached out, trying to. Re- oh, they tried to. Re- oh, this. Listen, Venus in retrograde has really been going for oh, it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. People have been trying to come back to our- child. <clears throat> um, trying to rekindle things. Things ended 
pretty badly essentially the and they hurt really badly i'm still really hurt about what they did but also sin over them how do you yeah just leave them don't listen <laughs> yeah i wouldn't recommend I knew she was gonna say I, that. yeah i just wouldn't recommend talking to them just keep face front venus is in retrograde it finishes on like september the 4th or something like that please yeah. remind me if i'm wrong and they would be gone by then yeah that got, thought of trying a week to re- or so time they'll that, be gone. <laughs> that thought of trying to rekindle will be gone you know because venus won't be in retrograde um i i just think you said so many times in this you know short it's badly really hurt short, short dilemma <laughs> that you've been badly hurt um yes or no like if somebody's really really hurt you i just don't think you should go back i just feel like we as a people need to stop running towards pain yeah like don't you want to be what peace of your life like listen mm. if something is bringing you too much pain and hurt yeah run away run away the ex that's hurt you badly Mm-mm. they have to take the l they missed they yeah, missed out on you they, they have mi- to just take the l and you know what you're both going to move on eventually yeah like you're just going to move on one day yeah yeah i think i understand being in love with someone so much that mm-hmm. you want them but i think that let's let's not just think about love because love is not enough like i think people always like focus on i love them i'm in love with them so what fam like love is not enough there are other things that you need to be able to be in a relationship or to be with someone or to be committed to someone like respect Mm -hmm. is so important i think a lot of relationships lack lack respect and the, the fact that this person hurt you they don't respect you Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. Like the way you said they hurt you really badly. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. If you were my friend, I'd be telling you the same thing. Do not be. Go- do not go back. Do not no. go back. Even as somebody who has hurt somebody really badly before, mm. like even if I, I wanted to get back with them at some point, and do you know what, I hurt them too much to even. I was like, do you know what they don't? Yeah. No, I don't actually have to leave them alone because yeah. I hurt them way too much. Mm-hmm. They, I don't deserve them. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying at this point because of how much hurt I put onto yeah. them. And as the hurter, I'm even saying that. So I would tell you to run away. Yeah, you know, but I just yeah. wouldn't say like, because yeah. if any if any of your friends came to tell you that they were hurt, I said, well, you tell them to run. Yeah, so like, do you know what I mean? Like, like it's just the truth. Just I'm, leave them alone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You will move on. And the thing is, it does take a long time to move on from relationships. So, like I feel like people say, oh, it's a year ago. You should be moved on by now. It takes no, it, it takes, takes that long. <laughs> yeah, like, it takes a bit longer sometimes yeah. than a year to move on, and that's mm. absolutely fine. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yes, that is the last dilemma. Um, and then what, what was I gonna say? See, that is that is the last dilemma, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Make sure you review us on Spotify. Make sure you let us know if you like this new setup. Yeah, like, we love your advice. We love your like advice, mm-hmm. your feedback, and stuff like that. So let mm-hmm. us know. And also, uh, make sure you hashtag to this podcast on Twitter. Um, yeah, and just share, man. We need you guys to keep sharing. Yeah, sharing, we need sharing, you to be using that hashtag on Twitter. Do you know what I mean? Talk about the things and also sharing on our Instagram. Also, I really want to shout out Jam. Um, Jamla, yeah. Not Jamla. Um, oh, Jammy. Jammy. Yeah, I really yeah. want to shout out Jammy because she is like the number one supporter. <laughs> she's even Adobe. Yeah. You've got her, Adobe as well. Adobe as well. <laughs> yeah. But, like she Jamie puts like she'll you know video it like put it on her Instagram like, yeah she's listening yeah, she's, she's like, playing stuff. it in the shop so you know her customers can can listen as well so I love that shout out you and shout out Adobe because she's always yeah. listening to and our Canadian driving. listeners our Canadian listeners they even been, you guys have been reposting Swipe Your Sign already yeah 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 Canadians. and listen to Swipe Your Sign it'll be out by the time this episode is out and you got to listen and you got to be tweeting and you got to be reposting and sharing and all that yeah because we want season two yeah. so keep yeah. going and you can listen to that everywhere bbc sounds Spotify, mm-hmm. Apple, everywhere you can just listen to everywhere um yeah. but tutus is not bbc sounds though okay <laughs> <laughs> but one day shout <laughs> amen thanks for listening guys until next week peace, peace.